Well, good morning, good people. How are we doing here? So folks, I want to welcome you to worship here at Quakertown United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Rick Brown. And as we get started, I want to call your attention to a couple announcements, all of which are found in your bulletin prepared for your reading. We'll just cover a few in here, here and now, so let's take a look at what we got. First up, at the end of each of your pews is a red pew pad. If you would please do so, if you have not done so already, just list that you're here. That helps our ushers know and have a good head count of who is here this day. If you're also a visitor or would like a special visit or other ways, there's boxes to check off there. In addition to contacting me directly, there's uh, my full information is on the back of the bulletin. So you can call, text, email me, whatever is most convenient. But please, let us serve you in a greater way. In addition, next Sunday, with the start of September, marks many great and exciting happenings. One of which is, of course, our new worship schedule. About a month ago, we've had an unveiling of that new schedule, and what that looks like is our first worship service will now begin at 8.30 a.m. Our Sunday school hour will begin at 9.45 and go till 10.45, and then this service will remain the same at 11 o'clock. So not much to remember if you're here for the 11 o'clock, not much changes. But please do note that that new schedule begins next week, and Sunday school will resume starting with Rally Day on September the 12th. Speaking of that week, we got a lot of things happening. First of which is that on Saturday, September the 11th, we have our annual chicken barbecue and bake sale. So that is the green half sheet insert found in your bulletin. You've seen it for many weeks now, but please, as we near the final weeks of that, if you would like to be involved, to volunteer for your time, if you want to buy some tickets in advance, buy them for your friends, coworkers, neighbors, what have you, all information about that is here on the green half sheet insert. So please join us for that and help make that a success. The very next day, because we're not busy enough, is Rally Day. And we're going to celebrate with a great many things. So as I mentioned, is the return of our Sunday school. We'll have a blessing of that before sending you off to your classes. And at the conclusion of this worship service, we have our church picnic. As a reminder, if you've not done so already, the sign up for that is outside of the narthex. Just look for the table that has a hot dog or hamburger on it. Then you're in the right place. Just put your name and any number of other folks who are coming with you. That helps Molly and Minerick get a head count of how much food to have. So please do her a service and let her know that you are coming. Lastly, because again, it's a packed month in September. On Sunday, September the 19th, is our Confirmation Sunday. Our Confirmation class has finished their study and are being ready to be presented and received as new members of this church. So if you would please help us welcome them with warm reception, that will be on Sunday, September the 19th, with a light reception in Miller Hall to follow. That's all the major announcements, but please do take a look at all of the information contained in your bulletin about the latest and greatest happening here at Quakertown United Methodist Church. With all that said, my brothers and sisters, let us indeed enter into a time of gathered worship. Please join me in today's call to worship. We gather together, hungering to be real, with genuine smiles and actions that match our alleluias. We are not content to just master the power of strength. We want to also master the power of mutual respect and mutual support. No more lip service. We want to be real. We yearn to rise above culture and prejudice to a mindset where foreigners and strangers are not held in contempt and all are invited to God's table. Brothers and sisters, if you would please enter into it, an attitude of prayer with me and join me as I pray the centering prayer that we may indeed find ourselves ready to be presented before the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You alone do wonderful things. Be blessed by your glorious name forever. May your glory fill the whole earth. O great and glorious God, your precepts are filled with mercy and justice. In every act, you bless us with your goodness. You call us to honor you, but we do so only with our lips. Instead of worshiping you, we take the ways of this world and conform ourselves to them. We leave your commandments and hold fast to that which is most convenient. Search our hearts and root out every evil thing which defiles us. Make us anew into your image that your love may once more call us away from death into your life. We know that every good endowment and every perfect gift comes down from you. By the power of your Holy Spirit, 
Bring us forth into your truth, that we may be the first fruits by the hearing and doing of your word. You have called us to care for the widows and orphans and any in their affliction. Go with us as we bring your hopeful and healing grace to all those committed to our care. May those in despair from any trouble or infirmity see the flowers of hope appear. May they enter into the time of singing their thanksgiving for your tender care. O God, anoint us with the oil of gladness and lead us to the ivory palaces of heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us sing God's praises together. Would you rise and sing with us? Jesus, Lord, we look to thee. Found on page 562 of your hymnal. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. Brothers and sisters, please be seated. And join me now in our modern affirmation that is found on page 885 of your hymnals or printed in your bulletin. Let us confess our faith together. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ, and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. At this time, I'd like to for invite forward any of our children for this morning's Children's Moment. Well, good morning, everybody. How's it going? I'm glad to be 
remember Simon Says? What do you think? Yep. Glad to hear it. Would you like to play a game with the congregation? Sure. Well, you guys get all the power. They can do what you said now. <laughs> you didn't realize what we were walking into church. That's all right. So let's go one at a time. How about you give them something to do? Fire away. Oh, think of anything. They'll follow along. Simon says, stand up and put your hands on your head. Tara, take it away. Simon says, turn around. This is a hard one. Simon says, sit down. <laughs> That's a little hard. <laughs> He didn't say take your hands off the ground. Oh, you're all out. <laughs> well, we had some fun with that. Uh, the principal rule behind Simon says, of course, a game of kind of gotcha. The whole point is you're supposed to do something when Simon says it, but if you do it when Simon doesn't, you're out, much like everybody here. You got the good, guys. The beauty about what God instructs us to do, it's not about setting us up for failure. He tells us to do things like care for other people, to love our neighbor, to give food to people who are hungry, and the list goes on and on. But all these things are good for us and good for those we do this stuff on too. So today, we're going to commit ourselves once again to hearing what God says and then do it. So guys, thank you so much for coming up. Everyone, please join us in an attitude of prayer. Let's pray. God, thank you for speaking to us today what you want us to do. That it's a blessing not only to do it, but also to see it help other people. So help us, Lord, to hear you clearly today and to do it with joy. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming for this morning's children's moment. Please return to your seats. My brothers and sisters, our next aspect of worship is the celebration of our offering. A time when we gather our gifts and present them to the Lord our God today. Please note that just like there's a change in our worship to next week's schedule, we'll also have some new instructions on a different way we're doing the offering to encourage greater engagement and to encourage you all to give up your gifts as well. But for today, as a reminder, the basket is in the back, so either on your way in or out, please feel free to make your offering there. But as we celebrate this offering today, a reminder, it's not just a piece of paper we drop off, but truly ourselves that we give before God at this altar. I'd like to invite forward our duet today with Ken Gorham and Jim Swearinger for a rendition of Because He Lives.
Brothers and sisters, if you would please join me in today's prayer of dedication. Let us bless the gifts we give today and the service we will render unto God this week. Generous giving God, we offer our gifts to you in gratitude for all the blessings you rain down upon us. Your sunshine warms us, your earth feeds us, and your word nourishes us. More than these gifts of money, we give ourselves our time and our energy that we might be doers of your word, and not just hearers only. We pray this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. And brothers and sisters, I invite you to remain standing for our next hymn, which is Take My Life and Let It Be, found on page 399.
Please be seated. Before we listen to the scripture, please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from James chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save our souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. And brothers and sisters, if you would please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson this morning. This comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, and then 14 to 15, where we find these words. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And these are many, there are many other traditions they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, for as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. If you abandon the commandment of God and honor human tradition. Then he called to the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside of a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Just a couple of reminders of the today. As a reminder that your pastor up here is a responsive pastor, meaning you're not going to throw me off with many of things, many of tried, all of them. So please feel free to respond. There are no rhetorical questions asked in my sermons. If I ask something, you're not going to throw me off by answering. I kind of expect it. It makes the cricket noises a lot more bearable when you respond in earnest. But with that, brothers and sisters, let us bless this time. Would you pray with me? O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. In every household, 
This very simple thing occurs, much to the bewilderment of every person. A mother will call, saying, please come here. And the same one-word answer will come in reply. What? Please come here. What? I want you to come here. What? And then you hear the neighbor over that. Just come to the kitchen. Because they can hear it. Though seemingly your child cannot. It's that funny happenstance that we all have this temporarily inability to hear. It wasn't there a moment ago, but it's here now. It creeps up at unexpected times when your spouse, your sibling, your parent is trying to get your attention generally for something good, but yet you can't hear it. And so the question, what? What did you say? Appears over and over again. While comical, we also have a similar thing in our relationship with God. Constantly seeking to hear God and His truths to better inform our life, to steer clear of sin, and to cling to what is good. And so, today, we seek to hear what God has said. Active through the Word and active through the Spirit, God is speaking, and it is to our benefit to listen. But beyond this, it is also vital that we take the next step in doing what God says. Because there is a danger in just hearing, but not executing what God has said. It is to our benefit to both listen and do. And after achieving that, to come back with fresh ears, to listen again. So friends, let's dive into God's Word and see what He has in store for us today. Even in the early formation of the church, the Apostle James, and much like the rest, had to address some early problems cropping up in the church. Many, of course, related just to the human condition. Much like in our introduction, he was dealing with some folks that didn't always hear correctly, or even if they heard, they didn't act on it right away. And so James began in this section that Deb read for us today with this thanksgiving for who God is, that every gift comes from the Father of lights, in whom there is not change. And so being thankful for this, James then offers up some teaching as we follow God and celebrate the gifts given. He says, you must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger are his initial instructions in this section today. They're powerful, they're meaningful, and they're in an order for a reason. The first one being quick to listen. For some of us, that is an easy task. We are prone to listening first before opening our mouths. But maybe you're like me, who has a habit of talking a lot, thus I'm in the right profession. And so we must, with discipline, teach ourselves to actively listen before speaking, and therefore possibly saying things that are unneeded, harmful, hurtful. For the listening tends to inform what we need to do. For instance, sometimes when we walk into a situation, what is needed is not a 20-minute prepared speech. Sometimes when we go and visit that dear friend who just lost a loved one, they don't need us to fill the silence. What they need from us in that moment is to listen even if not much is actually said. The great power in that moment is your presence. You're placing their hand upon their shoulder, or holding their hand, or embracing them, and saying, I'm sorry for your loss. Sometimes that speaks more than a thousand other words you could utter in that very instance. And they feel all the more supported and heard for it. So James was on to something in that initial instruction that it is good for us to be quick to listen 
and not simply quick to speech, which can be our tendency. He then invited us to be slow to speak, deliberate, intentional even then. For if we have heard and have a better assessment of the situation, all the better for us to then know what needs to be said. We have more direct words for the situation. We've gone out of the realm of assumption and go to the realm of being informed. I know what needs to be said because I've heard the need. Someone has asked for my help, therefore I will offer what I can. Versus just walking into a room and assuming somebody wants every bit of knowledge I've accrued for 30 plus years laid at their feet when they never asked for it. And his final instruction, slow to anger. This one he gave clarification as to why. For in verse 20 he says, For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. In the past couple of weeks I've given the example of when any of us are on the road and we happen to meet, um, shall we call them, other non-intelligent drivers. <laughs> and we may have some words for that individual in the next vehicle, in front of us, behind us, or across from us. James's words ring true then. Our anger, frustration, or unchristian words that we might speak to them or to our passengers do not produce anything good. In fact, in the greatest sense, if we step back and analyze that situation, our frustration, anger, or rage does nothing but further diminish our state of being. Now those in our car are walking on eggshells because our temper has flared up. We're a little bit more inhibited in our safe driving. It doesn't produce any good thing. And while a comical example, do we not see the underlying principle that James is laying out? Our anger in that moment didn't do any good. But if instead we take that as an opportunity to pray, to ask for safety in our travels for ourselves and for that driver and any others on the road, then a moment of temptation turns into blessing, turns into an extra moment of seeking God and finding that relationship. And so his words about being quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, invite us to hear what God is saying. Because if we're quick to listen to God, we'll find that God not only speaks through the Word, the Bible, but also our beautiful reality is that God speaks to us through the Spirit today. And not just through me as your pastor, but through all of you, that God is saying something to you in ages past and at this very moment, if we would just have ears to listen. Which means that a great thing for us to do at all times is to listen to God. What is God saying? And how do I act on it? For James pointed that out twofold, as Deb read for us as well. He first began by saying, you can't just be hearers. You have to be doers as well. And then he explained why. Why you have to do and hear. It had to be both, for they complement each other. He gave the example saying that those who hear but do not do anything about it are like those that see themselves in a mirror, but immediately forget what they look like. In a way, I feel like he was being a little playful in this example before really driving home the point of it all. This was to point out how absurd it is to hear something and then forget about it immediately. Why did you hear it in the first place if we weren't going to act on it? If God says, love thy neighbor, and you say, that's nice, God, and then go do anything but. It looks and sounds absurd, just like someone looking in a mirror to see what they look like and then forgetting all about it. And then as was read for us, he marks it up to how that religion looks to the world. A religion that professes one thing, but does the opposite. He said, don't deceive yourself or your heart. For a religion such as this, that hears and does not do, is worthless. So we can hear things, but it's also in the doing that it matters 
It shows that we actually heard in the first place, that we enacted those very things. And then he lays out what God finds to be true and good religion. Verse 27, he says, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for the orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So why would James point that particular commandment of God's out? This comes from a long history of commanding this to his people Israel. So why bring that particular thing up as the true religion that God wants of us? At the heart of that commandment is consideration for others. For even in Israel's time, as the name suggests, an orphan or widow is someone who has lost their connection. They have lost a parent. They have lost a spouse. They are disconnected. And so God the Father reminded his people that just like you were lost and fatherless and I became your heavenly father, so too you need to go out there and care for the orphan and widow in their distress. That it would be exactly like Jesus articulates in this next reading. It would be a little hypocritical to do one thing at the expense of another. And so, folks, we are commanded to hear God and act on what God says. But again, it would be a little incomplete. We could fall into a very nasty pitfall if we don't heed the words that Jesus laid out as well. For in our reading from Mark today, the setting is that Jesus is conversing with the group called the Pharisees. And if you're unfamiliar with the Pharisees, they were one of two sects of Judaism, or denominations to use a more modern term, but it's not quite a perfect fit. But they had their own particular beliefs that would separate them from other groups in Judaism. And they came to Jesus with an objection. They observed his disciples eating with unwashed hands and wanted to get clarification why Jesus would allow this. Why aren't they following the tradition of the elders? So what's at stake is Jesus is ministering to people, and those that have an issue with him say, but your people didn't wash their hands. Jesus points out what's truly at stake there, the lifting up of a tradition over the lifting up of God's commandments. He calls it out for what it is, hypocrisy. And then gives this teaching. He said, listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that can go in and defile it. But the things that come out are what defile. So nasty thoughts about food poisoning aside, the true thing at stake here, brothers and sisters, is what Jesus articulated there that it's not a matter of what we ate for breakfast or the hot beverage of our choice to start the day that defiles. It's what comes out of us. Going back to the example of being on the roads, what comes out of us is what really marks us as a sinner in that moment. It's not the gum we're chewing on that defiles us as we drive the roads, but when we start cursing and saying horrible things to another driver, that is the pitfall of sin that leads us away from God. That's what defiles us in that moment. It's not the things in our stomach. So to me, the caution I hear from Jesus today, it's not that we're not uninformed people that don't know various commandments of God. We could list off the Ten Commandments. We could proclaim the Great Commandment to love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, all our strength love our neighbor as self. The issue isn't the knowing. The issue is coming back to it, assuming that we have a lot still to learn. It's the humility to come back and say, Lord, I need to hear your instructions again to better inform my doing, to make a good commitment on what I'm about as a Christian. It's the humility not to let the tradition Rule me. Just because I've done it this way for 10, 20, 30 years doesn't mean, Lord, that I can't come back and say, Did I miss something, Father? 
I want to confirm because if I'm going out in your name, I want to make sure I'm doing it right. So brothers and sisters, might we indeed be people that hear God, make it our business to hear God's voice and to study God's word. Let's be doers of God's word, and then let us be humble to come back and hear of it again and again. To the glory of God. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, be offending an occasion about hearing being hearers and doers. Would you join with me in singing our next hymn, which is Lord Speak to Me. We'll sing verses 1 through 4. That's found on page 463 of your hymnals. And when you have found it, please rise. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us for this time of gathered worship and pray that God has blessed you in our time together. Since I didn't address it, if you're wondering who in the world came forward to sing, again, I want to thank all of our singers. This is just a little foretaste of the fact that your choir is coming back in just a few short weeks and therefore will join you in singing. And some of them just couldn't help but come forward and join us today. So my special thanks, of course, to, to Gail that helped organize that. So a little mini choir to join you today. With that, brothers and sisters, let us receive today's blessing and dismissal. Well, Lord, I ask your blessing upon all of my brothers and sisters that as we go forth from this place to serve you, you will give us fresh ears to hear you and an eager heart to serve you and a humble spirit to draw back, Lord, to hear and learn from you again and again. So, Lord, bless us as we go. We go forth to serve in your holy name. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you.